So far we've talked about budget lines and budget sets, and what those tell us is what people can actually afford. They don't tell us anything about how people actually feel about the goods that they're considering. They don't tell us anything about how they feel about different baskets of goods. For that we have to turn to the idea of tastes, or what we sometimes call preferences. So when we talk about preferences, we mean people's comparisons between different bundles or baskets of goods. So think, for example, of two baskets. We've got one basket, we'll call that A, another basket, we'll call that B. If you prefer basket A to basket B, we're going to write this as follows. So this looks sort of like a greater than sign, but it has some curvature to it. And the way we read it is we say, this means you prefer the basket A to B. If you're given a choice between the two, you're going to pick A. Sometimes you might be indifferent between two baskets. We're going to write that this way. So this little squiggly line means you are indifferent. between A and B. In other words, if I give you a choice between A and B, you say, I really don't care. You could flip a coin and give me whichever one comes up heads. And sometimes we're going to write A with this sort of squiggly greater than sign and the squiggly indifferent sign below to B. And we're going to interpret that as A is at least as good as B. Okay, so that's some, some, some notation about how we talk about preferences. Now, in order to move this along, we have to make some assumptions about tastes. And the first assumption that we're going to make is the completeness assumption. So we're going to say that your tastes are complete, that you have complete tastes, if you can in fact make comparisons between baskets. So your tastes are complete if for any two baskets, A and B, it's either the case that A is preferred to B or B is preferred to A, or you're indifferent between the two. So all we're saying is you're able to compare two different baskets. If I give you two baskets, you're not going to tell me, look, these baskets are so different, I can't choose between the two. You are able to make a choice, or you're able to tell me that you're indifferent, and you're happy with either one of them. In order for you to make a choice, you have to be able to compare baskets. And so when you can do that for any two baskets, we'll say that you have complete tastes. The second assumption we're going to make is that if you have three baskets, so we'll add a third basket here, call that basket C, there's a certain consistency to your tastes. So that if you prefer A to B and you prefer B to C, that should imply that you also prefer A to C. So let me write that down. We're going to say that your tastes are transitive. If we can say that when A is preferred to B and B is preferred to C, then this implies that A is preferred to C. Suppose that wasn't the case. Suppose it was the case that you preferred A to B and B to C and C to A. So if you prefer A to B and B to C and C to A, well now we're running into trouble because we also know you prefer A to B 
and B to C, but you prefer C to A, and so on and so forth. So if this was the case, you would have trouble making a choice. I give you a choice between uh, B and C, you pick B. I give you a choice between A and B, you pick A. Then I give you a choice just to check between A and C, and you say, no, you like C better. So there's no way to settle on a final choice. In order for you to be able to settle on the final choice, you have to have transitive tastes. If A is better than B and B is better than C, then A should be better than C. And of course, we could uh, come up with slightly different versions of this, where we say, if A is better than B and B is indifferent to C, well, then A should still be better than C. Or if you're indifferent between A and B, but you strictly prefer B to C, then it should still be the case that A is strictly better than C. So transitive tastes are just tastes that allow us to make choices that don't get us caught in this sort of endless cycle of never being able to make a choice. Now, when your tastes satisfy both the completeness and the transitivity uh, assumptions, sometimes we call these axioms because they're so fundamental to choice, then we're going to say that your tastes are rational. So by rational tastes, we don't mean anything deeply philosophical. We simply mean that your tastes are such that you can make choices. And in order for you to be able to make choices, you have to be able to compare bundles and you have to have some consistency in your tastes so you don't get caught in these endless cycles.